Good morning everyone. This is Ida of Created to Create. Welcome back to my channel. If you are not 18 years or older, this video content is not intended for you. I have been creating, guys. I have been crafting uh, plain still with the um, Jingle Christmas by Shabby Art Boutique. So I wanted to share with y'all what I have so far. I think I'm going to stop here because you know us as crafters, we can keep going and going and going like that Energizer Bunny. So it's time to stop or I'm going to make myself stop. Anyway, I want to share with you some of the pockets. Uh, these pockets right here were included in the digital kit and I cut them out. I just fussy cut them. Believe it or not, I did fussy cut and they pretty good because I'm, I'm horrible at that. Um... But I wanted to house the embellishments in the pockets uh, because I wanted to use as many of the elements in the kit as there was. And I didn't even use all of it. Uh, for this, I made a simple pocket just cutting out one of the, the, I guess it's like a journaling kit. So it has two different prints, you know, where you can fold it and use as a junk journal cover or something. Um, so I print printed those out that way I had you know as many of the images or background papers as there was and um, I used just that and they measure about a five by seven so I cut it out and these pockets about fit it some I had to take off a little bit or make the pocket just a tad smaller but pretty much they fit so I already shared these trees with y'all and um the little baskets and I just wanted to tuck them into one of these pockets here's one of the tags that's in the collection I'll share that with y'all and just as a just a little added something I just tuck in one of those Dollar Tree um, snowflakes but I did make these um, these little tags with the artwork so it has bigger and smaller peppermints this is glossy because I use the triple thick on there and pretty much what I do um, I just kind of squeeze out a small amount and just with my finger I rub it all around and I can just go wash my finger and it washes off but it does dry very very glossy and kind of dome like it's very similar to um, what is it that we use glossy accents and then with a paint pen I just did around the edge because these are those tags that have the metal edge. So I just kind of painted it in gold with that. And I adhered a circle to the back and to the front. So this one says, do not open, do not open, do not open until December 25th. So uh, I just made tags and these had a white cord. And I had these bits in that extra, that bag were... When I was hosting swaps or I was in a swap and someone would use twine or something to wrap their package, I didn't throw none of that away. I actually saved it. So I happened to have some red and white and it was perfect for these little tag embellishments. And I already shared and I just tucked it in the pocket. I did share the trees and the basket, but here is the tag. I didn't share the tag. Look at how beautiful that tag is. And I did fussy cut it and added some uh, crinkled um, seam binder and I will share the link to as many things as possible but, but please keep in mind that whenever possible I do use affiliate links which means I'll make a small commission for if you guys were to purchase uh, using those links and um, but I will post whatever I can find not everything will be available but I will do my best anyway I just uh, crinkled this up and did a, a bow here with a piece of twine and I did back this up with um, some pink heavyweight cardstock and I embossed it with the spell binders. I'll share that with you. I think I already shared it before but in case you didn't see that video I will share it now. This is the spell binders. 3d embossing folder and what i love about their embossing folders i only own one so far uh, there is a couple more that i want to get um, they're extra long so if you're you're the type that makes the five by seven cards 
you know, the regular standard embossing folders are really, really small. Those are made for the, what is it, four and a quarter by five and a half or something like that. That's what that those are made for. And I needed something taller. I do even have another one that's a full shape, but this would work for just about anything. Large tags, slimline cards, stuff like that. So this is one of the ones that I purchased so far, but I do want to add to that collection. Um, and that's the one that I used here. You can definitely add wax or a pink pen and, you know, add coloring to it. But I decided to leave it just the way it is and just let the recipient, you know, do whatever they want with it. And I'm just going to tuck tuck it right here behind the snowflake because I do want you to be able to see the snowflake and I want you to be able to see her cute little face just peeking out. Look at how gorgeous that is. Um, I didn't do anything to the back. I left it. On one I did, on two I didn't. You know, it, you know the recipient can do whatever they want with it. So there is pocket number one. And uh, here is another pocket that was in there. And I love the little reindeer and it has the pocket. Then you have to fussy cut around the reindeer antlers. And that was a little tricky for me. You can still see a little bit of the white, but it's not too bad considering I'm horrible at that. Uh, this one does have a backing. Again, I used the same embossing folder in the sage color. That way it would coordinate with the colors that are going on in the paper. I do miss my, uh, my papers before I emboss them. I miss them with water lightly. That way the embossing takes really well and it doesn't tear the paper. Uh, here's another one of those embellishments that I made with the peppermints that was in the paper. And this one I stamped in the back. I hope Rudolph eats the naughty li list. And this is just one of those little uh, cheapy economical um, stamps that sometimes I pick up on Amazon. I'm not even sure I'm go going to find it. And the reason I use that sentiment is because... Uh, this does, the backing has something like a, the R Rudolph the Reindeer song or something. Uh, in this one, again, I made some embellishments. I'll share these with you. I guess I got lazy guys and I don't know where all my bags are. And I kind of just put these in the same bag, but here. Let me put them here so you can see them. But they're very, very pretty. Here they are. They're very, very pretty. This die is an old die by Sizzix uh, that I've had for a very long time. I will share with you what that looks like. Uh, but these were the sentiments that were in the paper, and they were actually like tags. And I'll share with you. And they were like this, like these tags that I stuck in here. But I used my die to cut it out and, and give it a different shape. Um, and then I backed it like three or four layers because I wanted to add the triple thick to it as well. And then I just sprinkled a little bit of glass glitter and a little bit of iridescent glitter before it dried. That way it wouldn't flake off or anything. Here again, I used the sage green. Here I used the pink. And this one, I used that pearl ivory. So you could have ho, 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 merry and bright, tis the season. But there's other ones in here that I could have used. This is just my uh, sample of what I did with it. And let me share that one with you. I had to clean off my desk because I had tons of stuff on my desk. So this is the die that I use and it's got all these different layering pieces. And then it has these rounded in uh, little banners that you can add to the centers or shadow or however you want to use them. I've had this a really, really long time and I really love this die. So if I can find it, I will definitely link this one. So I'm going to set everything aside that I think I can possibly find for y'all. So anyway, these are the, you know what, maybe I will just put them on here instead of leaving them in this little bag that's not doing anything for them. Uh, my daughter got in my craft room, and she's a messy crafter. I don't know if I told you all that. And she got some glue on this piece of um, this card 
panel that I had. So it's really not usable for me, but I can glue a poinsettia from the paper here and then I can just use it as um, to put these embellishments on. That way they look pretty like that. So that's probably what I'll do. Let me set that aside. And then here is another tag. Hold on, let me. Here are the little tags that are included in the kit. And th th these right here were a strip of tags that I just uh, cut apart. And I do have the tool that makes this shape like a tag, like a ticket, a stub. So I use my punch for that. And again, if I can find that, I will link it. That was a gift from my friend, Mig. Hi, Mig. Uh, Mig Sal, she's from Puerto Rico. So she sent that to me and I used it here. It came in really, really handy because like I said, I'm not the best at fussy cutting. And I probably have a die, but it takes me a long time sometimes to find my things. So that's part of the kit. And then these tags were part of the kit. I think there's one more missing. Let me see. Maybe not. I thought there was four. Yeah, there is. So here are the larger tags. These I just use my corner rounder tool to round the corners. And then I cut straight across right here. That's what the paper had. Uh, here they were rounded, but probably not as much, but I felt that by using my tools, I would give it a better uh, or more professional look. I like things to look really nice, as nice as possible. So here are some of those tags that can be made as tags or just embellishments, and I'm just going to add them to the kit, uh, the, the Happy Mail that I'm making right now. And then here are some of those sentiments. Although there is a full sheet of sentiments, I didn't print those out, but here are some of the sentiments that I fussy cut out. So those, and then here are just some of the little bows, and I just put them in a package. Here are a couple of the larger tags. I shared the elf one with you, and here are two more. These I didn't back up. The recipient can do whatever they want with them. Uh, so there's that. And then here are the Santa uh, things that I cut out, whether they were with my brother scanning cut or fussy cut. I think these were with my brother scanning cut. In the back here, uh, I just added, I went to the Dollar Tree and they happened to have that snowy mesh that we all pick up, but they had it in this green that matches with the green that's going, uh, that's on the paper. So I just added a little piece back here to make it look like a snowy background um, let me remove this and here is I wrapped some twine around here there's the backing on that this one does have a backing as well and then I just added a seam binder a seam binding bow and I did I didn't glue these on there I used I have some uh, thumbs up um, glue dots, the clear glue dots that I had picked up from Tuesday morning a long time ago, and they're very, very strong. So I used them here in case the recipient wants to take them off. And here is another one of those peppermints. And this one says, I think I read it. I hope Rudolph eats the naughty list. Yeah, I think I read it to y'all already. But like I said, that was from a little cheapy stamp set that I had. So let me repack this one. And I'm just going to add the snowflake here. And it's going to kind of cling because of the mesh. And I just tucked all these things into the pocket where they would look pretty. There's that. Let me stick these tags in. And I'll move this to the front. And I'll tuck these back here somewhere. So there's this pocket and then my third pocket it had three pockets and I used all three of them here is my third pocket again here's another one of those peppermints because I did cut out three and I didn't fussy cut these I did use a die I actually had a die that fit and this one says your name is on the nice list and again the peppermint I use my hole punch uh, my what is it called? The one by We Are Memory Keepers. I used that to punch the hole and it punched fine even though I had this thick um, 
triple thick on there. And I did, I think I shared this nail embellishment before the little shaker that I had made. I only made one. I didn't make another one. I'm not really a, a big fan of making those. And I already shared that little cup. In here, all I did was I had a bunch of the little Santas. I didn't even use these. So I just put them in the bag for whoever gets it can play with it. Here's my snowflake I like to tuck in. And this one is not really uh, glued on here or anything on the tag. I just kind of put it around the bow. Here is that Santa. And because I, he has the sweater background, the cable knit background, I embossed it with a cable knit uh, embossing folder that I have from Richard uh, Garay. I'm, I'm not even sure if that's available. I picked it up several years ago. And, but if I can find something similar or the exact thing, a lot of times when I can't find the exact thing, I'll look for something similar that will work. So I'll do that. And then here are the leftover uh, die cuts that I cut out. <laughs> it's got snow on. Here are the little elves. And then here are the uh, flowers, the poinsettias. But I am really, truly bad at cutting fussy cutting that so whoever gets it they're gonna have to clean those up because I'm just not good at that let me tuck Santa back in here I'll tuck him back here I don't want to cover them up I think they're so cute my snowflake goes back here and then here are the other die cuts so this is going to go in another pocket you know what, I could probably stick this in the front pocket and it would look cute. And that way I can pull these out some. So here are the little die cuts. Oops. Here are the die cuts in that pocket. There. And then I made some uh, chunky rosettes. Um... Some of these will probably come off, but most of them stay on. And I had made this homemade um, clay bits to go into this mix. And I did a mix, and I hadn't even used it a couple years ago. And I didn't use it. That's when everything got really bad for all of us. And I didn't ever use it. So it matched perfectly with what I have going on right now with this. So I made the Dusty Pink Rosettes. There's the peppermint in the middle because it does come in the red ones and the pink ones. And then I encrusted it with the um, my sequin mix. And these are real thick. They're probably thicker than a quarter of an inch. And they're very, I like them. They're pretty. I don't normally craft with rosettes, but I know a lot of people like them. So I make them. I got my daughter to help me with a couple of things. I found these little pockets at uh, bags or pouches at the family dollar or something like that so she had printable vinyl and she did a couple images for me uh, this one's a little wrinkled up but it's okay I think it's still cute for you to be able to put something in it um, not sure what I'm going to put in them or anything at all because I did order some char charms but they aren't here yet who knows when they'll be here and then here is another one, a larger pocket. These came in a package of two. You get, you would get the larger and a one slightly smaller. And I put the Santa on that one. Very, very cute pockets. So I'm going to include these uh, in the Happy Mail. And then this is what I was most excited about. I created a box to house my... Um, I made a card kit that's what I was my goal was to make a card kit and I was looking for a knob to go on top and I couldn't find anything I couldn't think of anything I was racking my 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 brains like what do I have everything's put away in containers and I didn't feel like taking everything down and going through it but then I remembered I had these snowflakes that look like lace and these are not really a bright white they're more like a, an off-white that I had picked up from the Dollar Tree here recently. And I had these acrylic knobs that I don't even know where I bought them. I think Amazon, but I'm not sure, guys. If I can find them, I'll link them. And they're tiny. They're small. And um, 
and then I wanted to make the front of my box to be a shaker. So, let me hold it. So it is a shaker. See that? Now, for my acetate window, I do have acetate, two layers of acetate, one in the front, on the outside, and one on the inside of the box. The one on the inside of the box, I have some acetate that has like snow on it. So I use that in the back, on the inside of the box. On the outside of the box, and there is chip a chipboard frame in between, so that's why I have enough space for my sequin to mo move around because I do have chipboard in between. That way it would give me a little bit of room for the for the shaker bits to move around, but not so much. I didn't want like a big gap by adding foam tape. No, I just, the thickness of the chipboard and that was enough. And, um, and I used the clear acetate on the outside of the box because you can see the snow in the background. I didn't feel like I needed to use two pieces that had the snow on there. And I love, love, love the way it looks. This is that same sequin mix that I have in there. Those are my handmade little peppermints and candy canes. And then there's some little cookie ones. Those I did purchase. And then, of course, the sequins. And I love the way it looks. These feet I picked up from... Um, uh, I think I got these off of Alley, if I'm not mistaken. But I painted them, and I'm going to share with you some other ones before I get too far along and I forget. I kind of started this and then stopped. But when I was looking for feet or something to go on this, I remembered that I had painted some. So here are my white bits, and I distressed them with a file. So you see like it looks like chip paint. That was intentional. So I have them in the blue. I have them in this teal. And then I have them in like this dusty pink. But this pink was too close to the paper I was using. And it wouldn't look good. Then I had it in white. and But I didn't have the feet. So I had to redo. <laughs> I had to paint some of the feet. But that's some of the little things that are in my stash. Um... But all I do is paint them white because if you want them, if you want them to be a very pale pink and you don't paint them white first or a base coat, a white base coat, you're not going to get the true color that you, you want, you know, according to the paint that you bought. It's always best that you use a white base coat or a white paint. And I spray paint them, guys. I don't with a brush. No. The second coat, if my paint is an acrylic paint in the bottle, that's the only one that goes on with the brush. The base coat, I always spray paint. And then I take a file when it's dry, just a nail file, and start scuffing it up a little bit. So anyway, that's where these feet came from. And I didn't do anything on the bottom. I left it just pink, but there are the feet. I do paint them top and bottom all the way around. I do not paint the inside if at all possible because I don't want anything to keep the glue from really sticking because I glue them down first. And then I add the little brads. If I were to use putting these on wood, then I would use the screws. It just depends on what I made my box out of. Uh, here is the sweater knit on either side. And then the back has the beautiful elves on the back. And I did get a little glue here. You can see right there. But I'm going to camouflage that with uh, some stickles. So I'm going to add a little bit of stickling to this so it'll have a little sparkle and I just haven't done it. But look at how beautiful they are. I wish I had put a pocket in here so I could put a tag or something in there. But I thought about it too late. I already had the feet on. And because of the intricate way the feet are right here, it would be too hard for me to do that. So I decided not to do that, to just leave it like that. Now another thing I could do is just make it smaller. And I wouldn't have to do that, but I don't think I would care for that too much. So I'd rather just leave it alone. To open this box, um, I don't know if you notice how the edges are really, really clean on this box. The edges are real clean. See the edge there? Because I wrap my paper first, and then I add the hinge on the inside. 
So I wrap the outside, the individual pieces, then I add my hinge strip to adhere them together and I butt them up close because I'm not going to make a box and bend them opposite. I'm actually going to close it and create a corner to a box or a side to a box. That's how I do that. Um, anyway, this opens from the top and it's not made to fall all the way back. There's the, the inside. It's not made to fall all the way back because if this fell all the way open, it would stick out here because the lid is wider than it is taller. So uh, let me take out what I have in here and share it with you. I'll do one at a time. So in this one, I just uh, made some card bases with a hundred and I think it's I think this is a hundred and ten or a hundred and twenty pound cardstock. And um, I didn't want to do anything fancy or anything like that. I just created a belly band with the this digital paper with the scraps. I only had scraps. So I had one that was an inch, about an inch wide. I adhered a snowflake to it. And then I added the Santa to the front. And I love the way that looks. And then for my card panels, I didn't design them or anything. I just cut them out. And added some different frames and layering pieces in here as well. Um, I added some layering pieces in here as well. And just kind of... Um, this is one that I had cut and I did it wrong. And there's a bunch of little uh, scratches on this one. Because of, I cut it in the wrong direction and it was facing you know, my plate that was scuffed up. But I kind of like it because it looks like textured, almost like a canvas. So I decided to not waste it and add it here to this snowflake because someone would probably throw that away or not really even use it, you know. So, and there's the back and these are all the card fronts and there's different ones from the digital paper. So that's what I did there. And then of course, I already shared the card that I created. I'm going to send this as the example of what I did with it, but the recipient can do whatever. So that's the card that's going with it. I created some uh, satin bows that match the bows that are in the paper. These bows are actually in the paper. It's covered up, oh, right here, right here. See the bow right here in the pocket with the green and the pink? So that's what my goal was right here. So I did add a couple of the bows. I actually ran out of the pink, so I was only able to make two. And then a, two of the green ones. So I'm including that. And then I already shared my, sle my sleds with you guys. And, of course, I already shared my little shakers. So in case the recipient wants to do the exact same thing that I did or pretty close to what I did uh, on my card they have the shakers to go on the card fronts or card panels anyway guys that is all that I have to share with y'all today I hope that y'all like what I created and I definitely hope that the recipient likes it I want to thank all of you for watching thank you for supporting my channel I really appreciate it. I hope everyone is having a great day and God bless. Bye.